Welcome, family. Thank you so much for joining us. It's a pleasure to hang out with you just a little bit. I'm walking out to my flagpole this morning. Thought I'd say hello to all of you who are all over the earth, scattered. The remnant are scattered throughout the nations. And yet we are a chad, one accord, in the Ruach of our Elohim. Little by little, you're seeing my mountain starting to turn green. That's the third year in a row. They've never seen it that green. I know that for a fact because the first year, one of the locals was with us for a meal. And I asked them, you've been living here for oh, two decades or so, more than that maybe. So said, you ever seen the green on the hills? He says, never. And all the time you've been here, you've never seen green on the hills. Well, we don't know anything but green on the hills, so we don't know what it looks like when it's not like that. And it's not just those. Those as well. All around us. It's like the hills have come alive. It's a beautiful thing. So I wanted to talk to you quickly before we get to our news report later on today, because it's going to be a doozy. What are you looking at there, puppy? Look at my puppies, they're so beautiful. My Simba boy. Come on, tough guy. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be a doozy, folks. Uh, the scripture tells us that a wormwood comes down, a, an angel, uh, a star, rather, and makes the uh, waters bitter. And of course, you know, various people will try and interpret that in all kinds of ways. Bottom line is, things in the waterways are going to die. And we're seeing that right now. 13 tons of fish kill off of Fort Myers, Florida. And that's just the beginning. That's just one area. Uh, there's there's uh, fish kills and, and dead uh, fish in the water all throughout. Uh, uh, well, really pretty much half the United States right now. Uh, so it's, it's serious. It's very serious and very sad and very real. Don't hurt the birdie. Yeah, they're too fast for you anyway. <laughs> That's it. We made it out to our flagpole. It's a good 300 yards. How do I know? Because I couldn't hit a golf ball from here to my cabin. That's how I know. I used my measurer one day. And said, hey, that's like a, a par four. It's like walking a par four, walking to that flagpole. Come on, puppies. Come on. Usually I start walking home. They're barn sour. They start running fast and right in front of me. There they go. Don't hurt each other. It's already a dog eat dog world. <laughs> So it's going to get dicey, folks. It's going to get difficult. They have to um, collapse their current system, which we knew would eventually occur. We actually were expecting it sooner. So this took longer than, uh, than I thought. I thought it would be a lot faster. But it's finally happening. And... In some ways, we should rejoice because it's the end. It's the end of all that they have built. And I know they think they're going to swoon everybody right into a new system. Uh, that just isn't going to work. And so your world is permanently changing. Confidence in their institutions has never been lower. And it will not go up. So... Like Humpty Dumpty, they're coming down and they're not going back up again. And that's important to all of you because it's time to recalculate 
how you make your decisions, right? So for those that are kind of hunkering down inside Babylon, your time of escape is escaping you. And eventually, uh, the mechanism for escape will, will be gone. Uh, just like Sodom and Gomorrah, folks, don't think that Lot was the only one who could see that this, this behavior, the way these people were conducting themselves, was just unacceptable. But the righteous don't just simply sigh, they go. Okay, they separate themselves. This is how you know it's real. Now I want to talk to you quickly about something that we're seeing a lot of news on, especially when it comes to uh, uh, the areas of, of ministry that, that we're watching. And I want to warn you all about the fake and false uh, signs and wonders. And the reason why I'm warning you is because I've been at this a while. I, I say that often, but I say it for your benefit. In almost 30 years of ministry, I've seen a lot of people who needed deliverance and needed healing. I've also watched relapse rate. I had a conversation who someone with someone who is friends with the big names that you're hearing about who are putting out movies, you know, come out in Jesus name and all of that stuff. And what they're not telling everybody that they know for a fact. And how do I know that they know that? Because I was privy to back channel conversation, okay, behind the scenes. And they're scrambling because of the relapse rate. No, that's something I could have told them if they had come to get apostolic counsel and they would have saved themselves a lot of trouble. There'd be a lot of people that would be permanently getting free, but because they cannot bring themselves to realize that they've been deceived, evil men and seducers, waxing worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. Now you got to be some kind of sick weirdo, and and I'm being polite here. You got to have some kind of sickness to know that the people that you're supposedly doing deliverance for are going to relapse. There's got to be something wrong with you if you think it's okay for the sake of headlines, for the sake of ticket sales, for the sake of conference attendees. And pictures in magazines and pictures on Christian websites if you think that that's acceptable and you don't care that the relapse rate of everybody you're supposedly delivering is nearly 100% with rare exception if that doesn't bother you then I think that's about as reprehensible as you can get it's like a doctor who knows that the right treatment is nothing but salt water or some other simple remedy and instead they're pumping you full of chemicals no different same exact spirit and so let me just encourage you uh, with some basic facts okay again I'm sharing from nearly 30 years of work here and I can tell you the difference between people that are delivered in false names in uh, made up doctrines the relapse rate nearly 100% yeah, yeah you go back and check on these people not even three months later not even three months and they're exactly where you left them except worse and the last state of the man as Messiah said is worse than the first so for all their, oh, what you might call good intentions, it's not getting anybody delivered. And this matters, saints, because people are looking for answers. They're looking for hope. And 
when somebody tells them, oh, come on, I'm going to pray for you. And this devil's going to come out in Jesus' name. Right? Okay. And then that person ends up two months, three months later, hard relapsing. And I mean the last state of the man, worse than the first. You know, that happens once, you notice. Twice, you notice. 50 times, you start to really notice. You start asking new questions, okay? And right on our website, there's a seven-part series called Uncovering Demonic Doorways. And I really encourage all of you who are in the work of the ministry to park your butt and sit down and listen. Because otherwise, all you're going to do, go out there and do is make a bigger mess than you started with. And you're going to have a lot of people relapsing. And you're going to have some very uh, serious problems going on in people's lives. All because of the hard-headedness of the sons of Sceva. Who think they're just as good, doesn't matter, didn't do the work, don't have the comparative, did not look at the actual data nope just gonna keep on going because they're selling tickets and they're famous and it's all about that mammon and I can't be more direct than that and as you can tell as a grandfather as a shepherd I'm a little upset about it just a wee bit because I know for a fact what the results will be you cannot cast out demons of lies with lies. Look, deliverance is a truth encounter. Okay? Del deliverance is about the truth. The spirits of deceit con in, in, in having to deal with the truth. Okay? With the truth. And when the truth manifested and began to walk among us, they couldn't get out of his way fast enough. And, they, and he started to draw his people as disciples into the truth. In his name, they cast out demons. As soon as you start to receive lies and change out things that are critical to the recipe, you don't have the truth anymore. And they have blunted your knife and they did it intentionally because they were tired of being cast out. So they went to war against your weapons. Hey, this, is, this is one of the harshest proofs of the truth that, that you're all going to see is that people that are, are crying out to him um, and because of the blind leading the blind the people not only go into the ditch they can't get out of the ditch and there's a reason why they keep having the same crowds over and over again and the same people come back for prayer and the same people have need for deliverance and the last state is worse than the first and nobody can seem to answer that but they don't care because all they care about is they got a, a bunch of uh, people sitting there like uh, you know little chicks waiting for something to be put in their mouth the saints we have to pursue the truth it's the truth that sets men free That'll make you free. You shall know the truth, and the truth will make you free. If you want your deliverance to be temporary, then do everything in fake names and fake worship and fake everything. It's all fake and imposter anyhow. And that's exactly what people will become, is imposters. And they'll tell you about how they felt and their feelings and all that stuff. We don't interpret the scripture through our experiences. We interpret our experiences through the scripture. So sometimes you're going to feel warm, goosey bumps. Some of that is kundalini. False spirits meant to draw you, entice you, seduce you. Make you think this is the right way. The ruach and met, the ruach of truth, <laughs> narrow, hard road. And about your feelings. It doesn't coddle you. It tells you to get up and walk through the narrow road to the top of the mountain. There's a different spirit that will happily coddle you, wrap its arms around you, make you feel all warm and fuzzy, give you the warm, fuzzy, goosey bumps. Okay? No repentance. How do I know? 
Any who say who love him and keep not his commandments is a liar and the truth is not in them. This is the Ruach of Antichrist. Okay, this is a fake spirit. And so how do we, you know, all we got to do is judge a tree by its fruit. If the first thing that happens is people begin to, first of all, like Matthew, what happened when Matthew got hit with the Ruach? Man, he went home and cut off, cut off half his assets and distributed to the poor. Name one person that has been to a revival that's gone home and done that. Different Ruach? Yeah. Now they're looking for their own blessing, their own benefit. They want to feel good. It's all about them. That's not the Ruach of Yahuwah. I'm sorry. I hate to break it to you. Okay, there's seven ruach koth, and all lead you into truth, lead you into righteousness, behavior, conduct, becoming of a saint. And if that's not manifesting, then you got some other spirit. And that's just the facts. So I only share this in love because I'm seeing a lot of stupidity masquerading as ministry. I'm too old to pull my punches. If this offends you, get off my channel. I don't care. I'm, I'm not I'm not interested in a popularity contest. I'm interested in seeing People get set free just like you're hearing from doctors right now How are you hearing from some veteran doctors who are telling you the right way to treat diseases? And they're tired of the nonsense and lies that have been pumped out there, right? What's happening? They've gotten to the point the gray hair is saying you know what? I'm done playing this political game and not uh, offending anybody. I don't care I don't care. These people are putting demons more demons into people than they're getting cast out and those are the facts. If you don't believe me, no problem. Here we go again with the, I don't believe Peter. And years later, he gets proven right. All of you who is anointed are always ahead of you. Okay, so we're just going to tell you the truth. You can verify it later on. And by the time you verify it, you're going to find out that all that time is lost in verification. Watch. No, by all means, help yourselves. But I'm going to tell you right now, the results are in. And when people are admitting when these pastors behind the scenes, these ministers and leaders are admitting behind the scenes that they can't understand the, re, the recurrence rate. They can't understand the relapse rate. And that's just what they're willing to admit. They'll admit 60 to 70 percent. They'll admit that. You know, reality is almost 100 percent. Want to know why? Because they're ministering from an imposter spirit, imposter doctrine, and imposter lies, and expecting permanent deliverance. I love you all. I'm not trying to offend anybody, and I really don't care if they do get offended, but I'm not trying to offend anybody. I'm just telling you the truth. You cannot get people delivered in false names, false doctrine. You cannot cast out the devil with the devil. You cannot cast out lies with lies. You need the truth. And that requires courage. That requires great humility. Most of these people who are who are doing deliverance are themselves not even baptized. I, just think about that for just half a second. That's like a doctor without who never went to school and he puts up a shingle. And then you find out, wait, you you're not even certified or you're not even you haven't even been educated. You just decided to put up a shingle. And that's exactly what you got out there. You got the blind leading the blind. And so don't believe me? No problem. Tell me the results. I'm sure there's going to be somebody saying, no, no, I, I'm doing great. Uh-huh, you're doing great. Yeah, I just got totally delivered. Okay. There are ten commandments. Ten. Ten instructions that we were given that were written in our hearts. He didn't say, thou shalt not, meaning you better listen to this. He's prophesying about what will happen when his Ruach hits you. So once again, you will not take his name in vain. You will not have any idols or have any patience for any. You will remember the Sabbath day. Oh yes, you will. When his Ruach hits you, you won't be able to forget the Sabbath day, All right? You will definitely not be a thief. You'll, ha you'll have that same Ruach hit you like it hit Matthew, and all of a sudden, half of your stuff's been given to the poor just to say you're sorry. That's how you know real revival is coming. You bring forth fruit, meat for repentance. Don't be so easily fooled by three songs and a, and a hallelujah. 
saints, that's not repentance. That's just a celebration in the POW camp. That's all I got to say.